Hello, my name is Matt, and I will be providing my reflection in this video. So, one, I would like to start out with some of the ethical dilemmas that were presented in this scenario. And I would like to start out with uh, when the nurse, Nurse Carl, is determining the priority inter intervention, the priority action to take when Mr. Davis is itching. But the question relates to Mr. Davis is reporting itching over his arms and chest. What is the most appropriate action Nurse Carl should take? And uh, I wrote in there to administer an antihistamine to reduce itching over the arms and the chest. And the rationale is to uh, check Mr. Davis's medical record for a shelf is allergy and recognize that the possibility of an allergic reaction related to a shelf is allergy may be present. Um, then you can notify the provider as the nurse uh, that there is a reaction occurring to the contrast dye. Um, and then also the nurse can check the client's skin for a rash and request a prescription for the diphenhydramine IV to decrease the itching, which seems a little bit to me like a delayed response. And it seems a little bit delayed because if there's an anaphylactic reaction occurring that is a rapid systemic response and the airway is being obstructed, um, it seems like the priority action should be to um, assess, immediate intervention to be to assess the airway, breathing, and circulation, and consciousness, and to immediately uh, get uh, that information to the provider so that we can get the epinephrine on board, or so that we can get the diphenhydramine uh, to sort of reduce that response. And, and there's a resource that I'm looking at here uh, in, a, in a paper that is titled um, How to Manage Anaphylaxis in Primary Care, and this article was published in 2017 by Alberto Alvarez Pereira. And, and Lucia K. Stano and Maria L. Beza. And they say in one of their charts of the priority action and evidence-based practice is to your immediate intervention should be to assess the airway breathing and circulation and consciousness and then administer the epinephrine if the anaphylaxis is indeed um, constricting his airway. But uh, our options here are to, um, are to administer the stiphenhydramine. Um, Furthermore, I want to talk about an aha moment, and an aha moment involved the importance of uh, conducting regular assessments after a procedure like Mr. Davis, and so the role of the nurse in the healthcare is it's vital to patient care, and so without this nursing assessment and intervention, it's likely that Mr. Davis, he could have rapidly declined and become unstable uh, much more quickly than how it was unfolding in the scenario. The nurse was able to identify the post-procedure hemorrhage, potential manifestations of anaphylaxis, and the conditions related to the cardiogenic shock. And so this scenario will expand my nursing care by being more cognizant of potential complications that can arise and the importance of uh, nursing assessments and always being vigilant and interpreting uh, findings and listening to the patients and uh, doing this constant assessment and interpretation of findings. And furthermore, I want to talk about one aspect of the care plan and decision that I did not initially realize and was not prepared for is the importance of administering norepinephrine through a central venous catheter or large vein to prevent localized vasoconstriction. So I understand the function of norepinephrine and epinephrine for the matter, and then norepinephrine is used for the hypotension, epinephrine is used for anaphylaxis primarily, um, and both involving this increased systemic response to increase blood pressure, increase heart rate, I, I understand that, but this development of, of the tissue necrosis and problems around an IV site uh, they're all preventable problems that all nurses should have a generalized awareness for. And uh, I did not initially realize that there could be a systemic, or a localized, excuse me, a localized vasoconstriction uh, when epinephrine is injected. Although I, I believe that it should be maybe included with some fluids to help um, uh, reduce that risk even in a large uh, vein in the antecubital region or uh, anywhere around there. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the concepts that I learned uh, and that I'm going to take home from this scenario. 
And so one thing that I learned about is the term of uh, vesicular breath sounds. Now, I probably was taught this in health assessment, but it was a year ago, and I don't necessarily recall everything that I learned about a year ago. But vesicular breath sounds are, are indicative of a healthy adult client, and uh, the vesicular breath sounds are this low-pitched, soft, breezy sounds throughout all the lung fields. And so frequently when we're looking at documentation in the hospital and in clinical settings, um, it's always documented that lung sounds have no abnormal findings and are often documented as BCTA or bilateral clear to auscultation. And so adv adventitious sounds like ronca, rails, crackles, and strider are emphasized in teaching, but the concept of this vesicular uh, sounds present, you know, if it's taught, it might be underutilized in the healthcare world, especially when I read the progress and history and progress reports on uh, the patient's chart in, in the hospital. So this was, a, this was an important take home, as simple as it may sound, that I can take with me into the nursing world. And uh, it's good to bring that knowledge back. Um, anaphylaxis, another concept that I learned about anaphylaxis should be identified as soon as possible and have more manifestations that solely... Uh, th th what I'm trying to say is that anaphylaxis uh, it has more manifestations than just the decreased airway. And so these other manifestations of the severe systemic reactions or anaphylaxis are uh, dysphagia, cramping, vomiting, diarrhea, and seizure. And so when you always think of anaphylaxis, you think about you know airway closing up and the patient not being able to breathe, which is, should be a priority intervention, but there's other... Uh, factors that may be leading up to this anaphylaxis that should also be noted. And so the nurse needs to monitor for bronchospasms or the strider due to laryngeal edema. And so Mr. Davis's skin, he might have an ashen tone or an oximeter reading of 90% or less, which is probably one of the key characteristics here of anaphylaxis that would indicate uh, this poor uh, perfusion uh, or oxygen exchange due to edema of the airway. <clears throat> Furthermore, I'm going to talk about another concept of uh, cardiogenic shock. And so a client who is manifesting, manifesting cardiogenic shock can have hemodynamic instability. So these can be observed by decreased blood pressure, tachycardia, uh, reduced MAP, agitation, and restlessness. And I think one of the key take-homes here from the scenario is related to um, changes in mental status. And changes in mental status should be the number one sign that people should look out for, that nurses should look out for, and changes to reduce perfusion related to the anaphylaxis and related to cardiogenic shock is watching out for changes in restlessness or in agitation and just the general change in level of consciousness. One more thing I want to talk about, one more concept I want to talk about is that Nurse Carl should include that a persistent dry cough is an adverse effect of lisinopril and it may present uh, until the medication is discontinued. And so hypertension is a, a, um, a key player here in, in heart disease and coronary artery disease, and its management is crucial, especially for reduction of stroke risk. Um, Mr. Davis should notify the provider if he experiences this adverse effect so the medication can be changed. And I feel that sometimes education may be uh, overlooked and something like this may be overlooked if a nurse is really busy seeing six, seven patients and uh, the primary health care provider did not, maybe provided a pamphlet to the, to the person and told them, here, read this, it'll tell you all about the side effects and adverse effects and things that need to be reported. And so if this isn't clearly communicated with the patient, then it may present some problems later on. And so... <clears throat> This education of a persistent dry cough as an adverse effect of lisinopril is a, is a key take-home for uh, nurses to make sure that they, they have the pharmacological understanding and they're able to, to convey the messages that need to be uh, presented to patients and that the time is being taken to um, have a clear education and understanding of the conditions in which the, the patients are taking medications for. And so that's my reflection video uh, for this scenario.